Good day, Brutal Planet listeners. This is Eric Peterson, and today I'm joined by Michael Beck from the band Kings of Dust. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good. Where are you joining? Where are you quarantining from? <laughs> I am quarantined at um, my day job, which is a recording studio. So I'm at Sound Vision Studios in Mesa, Arizona. Nice, nice. And the weather nice down there? Weather's beautiful. It's awesome. So you're, it's probably hard yeah. to get people to actually stay inside when the weather's so nice. Exactly, exactly. I, I would just assume uh, sit out on the porch, which I may do here any moment. So. Yeah. <laughs> So for you guys, how is things? Uh, how is since the shit hit the fan? How has things affected you guys with uh, with all that you guys are doing? Yeah, it it that's a, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> um, we had uh, you know the record came out March thirteenth. Yep. Uh, Self titled records on on Shock Records, Sony Music, and we've had a couple of problems, and you know some of them have been good problems but still problems we we uh you know we're we're not bon jovi by any means so you know most of the record stores didn't order 20 copies they ordered two oh, okay. so but the the good news is is that most of them sold out pretty quickly That's so good. the but the bad news on the back of that is that sony was really pretty slow getting things shipped back out on on back order but now they're they're finally hitting stores again. So, you know, if anybody out there went to their local record store and tried to buy it, and they didn't have it. That's probably why. And hopefully they've been replenished by now. So, okay. again, good problem. Yeah. But, you know, we'd sure like you to have the record. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> so, again, you guys just released that album, the self-titled album, just not like less than a month ago. Almost you a know, month. We, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there's and there's a we had some tour plans. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, we had we had some tour plans that were kind of starting to come together. Oh, that you know it's like most bands anymore today. You know they aren't really you know six month tours. They're you know a string of five dates here and five seven dates there. But we had through. Yeah. You know, of course, that all went up in smoke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so your 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 album though, so, you guys have a lot of hype behind your album. I mean, it's a it's a great album, but I mean, you guys are, I mean, right there with the best of the best as far as supergroups go. I mean, there's you, of course, and uh, you sang for Red <laughs> Red Dragon Cartel, and yeah, uh, and and then tell me a little bit about the other guys. Um, Jimmy, the drummer, was with um, a version of Surgical Steel, who was a, a, a really great band out of Arizona for a while that did some national stuff. Um, Jimmy Taft, uh, Ryan McKay, our guitar player, um, he's been in a couple bands. He was with um, Crash Street Kids. That was a, a while ago, but kind of a throwback glam um very much rock band. Okay. Um, and then he was also playing with uh, Louis Prima Jr., which, which is kind of a different genre altogether, but he wrote two records with them and, and was playing with them for quite a while. And then, uh, the, of course, Greg, Greg Chason was uh, the bass player for Badlands and has been in several other notable outfits as well. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's a, and then myself. So it, it's a it's a pretty rounded group of uh, of really qualified musicians, and yeah. I'm really happy to be a part of it. So I was I was talking to uh, your publicist yesterday, and I was telling him that uh, I was doing some research on you, and said that you were uh, part of Leather Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was for, for a couple of minutes. Okay, I, all right. <laughs> uh, I, I actually flew out to California and worked with, with Dean and Jeff um, for a while on what wound up being the New World Order record. Okay. But as things went through, um, their singer, their original singer, Michael, um, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, wound up coming back to the fold, and, you know, that's a better deal for everybody. 
Yeah. So it, it, it worked out for them and I'm glad it did. Good, good. And so, I mean, it obviously worked out for you because you now you now you were in Red Dragon Cartel and now you've got this Kings of Dust stuff. What what uh, on the album? How, how would you explain the album to to the listeners today? Uh, it's it's pretty, pretty 70s influenced. I mean, if you're if you're into, you know, Black Sabbath, Zeppelin, uh, Deep Purple type music, then hopefully you will really like this record because that's that's really where it comes from. Yeah. Um, we, uh, you know, we all grew up with with those bands in our ears most of the time. And um, that's pretty much where the record lives. I mean, it's all based from that. Um, you know, we all do our share of the writing. I do um, pretty much all of the, the lyric and melody. Um, Greg and Ryan do a lot of the um, of the ori original riff and the original song. Um, but once we get in the room and start hashing it out, whoever comes in with the idea, um, it, it becomes a band thing pretty quickly. Greg is actually a, a really, really good at arrangement. So he's got his hands full of, of not only a lot of the riffs, but a lot of the arrangement and, and he does a pretty good job of it. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, you guys have that, that very much of an old school sound, but it comes from a place different than a lot of the new, new, newer bands out there because they are kind of, in my opinion, trying to rehash some of it where you guys, this was the stuff you grew up with. So this is your, your stuff that you, your influences. This is, uh, this is definitely a, you know, first crack at the bat instead of a second, third or crack at the bat. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I would, most of those bands that are doing that type of sound, you know, Rival Sons, Greta Van Fleet, Blackberry Smoke, um, Wolf Mother, I really like all those bands. So I would much rather listen to, you know, rehashed Bad Company from Rival Sons than I would most of the stuff that's out there. Yeah, yeah. But, but that being said, you know, those guys are, are a little bit younger than us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm sure heard it from, you know, their fathers or, or whatever. And where, like you say, we're, we were, it went directly into our ears. It wasn't through somebody else's. So I think that's a little evident on the, on the, on the record, um, how pure that stream is, but don't get me wrong. I, I definitely enjoy all the bands that the other bands that are doing it second generation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I was going to ask you when I was, when I was been listening to the album, who I was trying to figure out who your voice kind of sounds like. Do, have you got any comparisons for people that I have, I have. It, it, so you, but you got to go first. I, I, I can't put my name on. I was thinking a little bit about, um, I was thinking a little bit about, about uh, Mark from uh, Bullet Boys, a little bit of that sound to it. But very cool. I couldn't. That, that, could. that first Bullet Boys record I actually have on vinyl and I listened to maybe a week ago. Oh, and did you really? That is still from that era one of my favorite records. Jimmy Anda is, Deanda is a, is one of my favorite drummers. Um, the, uh, what's the guitar player's name? Mick Sweeta. Yeah, um, yeah. One of my favorite guitar players, straight up Les Paul guy. I really enjoy that record. So, and Mark's got some great vocals on there. Yeah, so, he does. You know, ha having, with you saying that doesn't offend me at all. Okay, so that was the first one that came to my mind, and then I would, you know, you close your eyes and you go, okay, where am I, where am I picturing this? And so that's where it first went to was was the original Bullet Boys album. Yeah, I have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> so, so now, what have you heard, or what what would you say? Well, I mean, what I say is irrelevant. <laughs> um, well, I'm hoping you know, it'll spark my something that I'll go, yes, that's it. <laughs> Well, I, I, I mean, the stuff that I grew up on and that was the guy that was, there's two guys actually, that were probably the biggest influence on me. And 
I don't know how much of it you hear, um, but it's definitely there. I, I don't try and emulate anybody, um, but they're certainly in a in my bag full of tricks. Okay. Um, the first one would be Steve Walsh from Kansas. Okay. Who um, literally, I mean, left overture. I I went, I sang to that record over and over and over and over again, as best I could because he's got an unbelievable voice and. I didn't have that kind of voice at that point. Yeah. Um, but his melody ideas, his lyrical ideas, the way he would phrase things is a, is a huge influence on me. Um, the other one, um, both for tone and who I still think is maybe the best lyric writer in the history of lyric writers and doesn't get nearly enough credit for it is David Lee Roth. Um, yeah. He the way the way he uses his voice in those first four Van Halen records. I mean, you know, I love Eddie Van Halen, and you can't take anything away from him. But if he didn't have Roth, I didn't. I don't know if you'd ever hear of Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> so, so I, mean, I know where to, I know where to go when you say when I say Hagar or Roth. I know where you're going. Oh, it's not even up. It's not <laughs> even a debate. It's not up for grabs. I, and what's odd, you know, about that debate is that Sammy is a better singer. Yeah. He's a way better singer. He is, he is by leaps and bounds a better singer, but he's not David Lee Roth. Yeah. The only person that's David Lee Roth is David Lee Roth. And he is, I mean, he literally redefined that position with both his attitude and Again, his lyrics just are amazing. If you really dive into what he's saying, ah, uh, go into like Mean Street oh, from, yeah. from Fair Warning, uh, you know, Unchained, or go back to Women and Children First. His lyrics are really on point. And that struck me at a very early age really hard. That's cool. That's I mean, that's and that's a good, good reference point for people to know kind of, I mean, that was one of the bands I was thinking of when I was listening to your guys' music a little bit was I was like, yeah, I can hear some Van Halen in here. Yeah. I mean, you know, Blue Eyed Murder in a Side 5 dress from, you know, a David Lee Roth lyric. Yeah. It doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, that, exactly. That's, that's the shit right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so then was, would you say... David Lee Roth had a big influence on you then vocally because that I mean that now that you say that it does really that's who I start to hear a little bit when I close my eyes and and listen to your guys' album. Yeah, and again I I have and, and again I'm sure Mark Torin would would not argue with that <laughs> with that. <either>. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm sure David Roth is in there for her. Um, you know, some other vocalists that, that I, you know, when I was really learning how to be a singer, because learning how to be a singer is not just singing. It's, yeah. it's so much more than that. Yeah. And the other guys would be, you know, definitely Ronnie James Dio, you know, when heaven and hell came out, I just absolutely devoured that thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was a huge record in, in the way I, and I was just kind of getting into being in bands and stuff like that when that came out. And so running James Dio is a huge one in there. Um, you know, Ian Gillen is a, is a huge one in there. Um, you know, those guys are, are really what I, I cut on it. I, I'm sure you hear little bits of all of them at any, some, at any one point. Yeah. So your so the new album, is there any songs on there that have any particular special meaning to you that you wrote about something or anything in particular? Well, all of them. I, I mean, again, I'm, I, I do most of the lyric writing and, and melody writing, so I don't really like to write. Um, don't stop believing, you know? Yeah. Although yeah. I wouldn't mind the check from it. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not really how I write. Yeah. Um, I try and write. Um, I don't want to say a little deeper than that because that, that's a little condescending, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
it's most of my stuff is not you know girl in a bar type things um most of my stuff is either self-reflective um in one way or another it's a you know i i i want to make i always look at songwriting in in that fashion as kind of a layer i mean you got to have a hook to draw people in so at you know at the point where it doesn't really matter what you're saying is is probably as or more important you know with the melody you've got to draw people in but i hope as they get further into the song they they hear the lyric they understand the lyric they internalize the lyric and i try not to write um songs that are really obvious that this is what this song is about this is of you know you get the cat scratch fever and yeah. you pretty much know what the song is about um and again i love cat scratch fever so i'm not putting that down yeah. but that's just not how i write i write um try and write a li- so it goes a little deeper than that and that i try and keep it as general as the listener will allow meaning that if you listen to like an ocean which is the the first song on the record yeah. I, I would like you to draw your own conclusions about what that song is about. Ah, okay. Um, and, you know, if they're not mine, th- th- it doesn't matter. I, I mean, as long as the song means something to you, that means something to me. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, but so all the songs on the record have a pretty personal meaning to me because I'm, that's, I'm writing them. Yeah. So th- okay. I, if they didn't have that, then I probably wouldn't, have finished the song. <laughs> true, very true, it's very true. Yeah. So I mean, and, and so as soon as all this stuff settles down, you guys are, I'm guessing, gonna try to get back on the, or try to get on the road and do some live stuff. Um, yeah, I, I sure hope so. I, I mean, I we were, we were just kind of in the midst of putting all that together and trust me when I say that I am, and not just me, but the rest of the band are, just absolutely chomping at the <laughs> bit to take this out live. I mean, yeah. I I am so looking forward to marching this out of the barn. Um, it's this is a a really talented band. Um, you know, knock on wood, <laughs> we all get along really well. Um, we've all kind of you know been through the this and that and have been in the industry in and out for a while and for in varying degrees of success and um it's just a really good band i mean every buddy is is just a real pro at their instrument they're a real pro at being a human that's good <laughs> and uh it, it really is it's 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 a joy to write with you know when Greg is usually the one, not always Ryan brings in riffs too, but, um, you know, when Greg starts playing a riff that he brought in for whatever reason, and I don't question it because it's not one of those things you should, I just hear melody. I hear melody immediately as yeah. soon as he starts playing. So it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we've tried to take advantage of. And actually in this downtime, now that we're not touring, we're writing. So, you know, it, it may be that may be that we have a second record out before anybody ever sees us live. Nice. <laughs> nice. I mean, nothing wrong yeah. with that. I mean, do you have two albums worth of material to play live? That's even better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we're already probably five songs into the next record. Cool. So it's it, it's going really well. Um, you know, the the uh, just the, the, the kind of magic that happens when we're when we is is pretty undeniable i mean greg and me are just a power player has been in the industry for they just it's like glue they just yeah. come together really quickly and ryan has a It's even more obvious live. Yeah. I'm, we're all definitely anxious to prove that. So I've got one last question for you. 
Um, it's tell me a song of either that you have you either written or played that in your past that by content or by title describes the state of the world right now. A Kings of Dust song? No, I mean any song of yours that you you it could be a Kings of Dust song too. Oh, oh. well, um, let's let me let me think about that. That's a good question. Uh, that relates to what's going on now. Yeah, I would have to say. I mean, the one that comes to a mind to my mind immediately is upon reflection. Okay. Um, because that song is is. I mean, the title's pretty apt. Yeah. Um, it it talks about you know, thinking back on some of the things that you've done and how you could have done it differently. With that being said, another one that is pretty apropos for the moment, as in today, uh, would be wolves. Ah, yeah. <laughs> because the the world has kind of turned itself upside down a little bit and uh, the wolves are at the door. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. And I think, you know, the... The first one you mentioned, when you look back on things, you almost you almost want those things back now because of the way things are now. That's exactly true. I, I mean, upon reflection is is uh, is definitely a, a a song that that lyrically is just that. It's about kind of thinking back and you know that upon reflection that you. You know, you maybe could have made some different choices and mm -hmm. and maybe you didn't and maybe that was better or not. Yeah. But yeah. I think once we get on the other side of this, we'll all be thinking about that. Exactly. So. Exactly. Well, I appreciate your time and everybody out there. Go pick up the new Kings of Dust album. Um, the first one while you can and uh, <laughs> find it and yeah. find it. However you have to find it, find it and get it and listen to it. Because pretty soon the second one will be coming out. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, who knows? Yeah. I, I mean, we're like I said, we're busy writing right now. So cool. definitely go pick it up. It's it's a little over an hour's worth of music. It's a full length release. And, nice. And uh, play it loud. Nice, nice. Well, I appreciate your time, and you stay safe and stay out, stay out of the harm's way, and uh, we will chat soon. Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah.